I'm not sure. How depressed were you when you went to the school? I just That's my favorite. Friday, I should have brought the photo pod because I was like really short and breaking my back trying to record. What time does this class start? It's like 48. Yes. Apparently 9.50. I don't know. Does anyone know when this class is? Mr. Barlow. 9.45. What time is this class at? 9.45. Alright, so the first bell rings at 9.50 and then we go to 9.55. What the hell? Johnny. Come on. Oh, Johnny, three viewers saw your ugly face. You can't have any empty seats. You've got to fill in every seat, every row, all the way down. All the way down. That means you get up and get down. Every seat, every row. You can now have any empty seats. Every seat, every row. Does he not? Hey, guys, right here. I'm just going to keep leaving you on the Jack, you got to scoot all the way down. Jack, you got to scoot down. That's the only reason we're here. I have her. I don't know. Please tell me how we're going to pay every single person. Exactly. We're not. The freshmen are going. That's not the last year. Yeah, the freshmen are all going to be fast. I was going to say, do you think the upper row of the city is going to be used to? Oh, you're still there. Everybody? She's not talking to me like that, though. Oh, do we go? Oh, hey, Barbara. I can't. 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 I they made the competition. So what's the picture? I don't worry about it, you know. That's a bunch of friends. I assume. Let me see. That's Mr. Hager. That's not a that's not a bunch of fresh I see what's he in here. No, but there's like a bunch of fresh over there. None of them are there, don't you? None of those people are fresh And then that's a fresh one right there. Alright, I want to see a 450 page play going on right now. Come in, boy. What? What are the And I think it is. I'm taking a damn picture. I'm down for that. I'm going to take a damn picture and I'm not even going to get a flash. That's the first thing I said to him. He was calling him a bushy boy. A bushy boy. I died. Fuck, I died. Fuck, I died. 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 I know. What is it? Ms. Morgan says. You're not gonna call it, just keep going back. Keep going back. Or don't, don't say that. You feel the fall. Well, oh, yeah. Don't fall. Don't fall. I'll catch you. Bye bye. You almost died. Oh, you almost died. Oh, you almost died. Chris. <laughs> <laughs>
ounces. Y'all know there's a bathroom back there? No. Yeah. No, that doesn't sound like the other day. Then why the hell do y'all keep going out there to use the bathroom? She doesn't have her back here anyways. Two K T V that I will nope, build a cover. Class is just left. <laughs> I will build a cover of two K. Oh my god. Sierra Silver so slippery. Sitting right there. Yeah. Sierra's right there. So, roughly four classes watch that entire photo go down. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid. Why am I the one giving a warning? There's, there's six, seven people on the stream right now. Hey guys, we got to fill well, in that seat right there. Yeah, it's definitely. Oh, that's somebody who's sitting there? Okay. I just know Mr. Donahue is going to be. Wait, we're Yeah. From where? My phone? I mean, yeah, but like, where can you see this right uh, now? Go to, go to our YouTube channel. Someone in my store. I literally just like the whole Good morning, guys. I hate all this. Yes. Oh, sorry. 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 Bro, his yeah. head is looking that is so good. Like, picture is perfect. Like, they could be on the point, yeah. Good morning, Captain Students. As many of you are aware, we have a special opportunity to hear. Hey, how many people are my students? Which means it's like eight classrooms.
I had planned to do that and I forgot. Someone joins the system. Not so nice stuff. Did somebody already say something? I don't know. Okay. I haven't joined. Somebody already what? There's 12. <laughs> Show the chat. At least like 85. <laughs> I don't know if he can get it. That's the thing. So, we'll find out. <laughs> Malachi, do you see the chat right now? <laughs> I see you, smell what you look like. Yeah, he's working on three. He's working on three. Oh my god, you guys are second half. Thank <laughs> you. 
that was my last one. I want to put this one right down.
I have it on my phone, but my phone's a little busy right now. I think it was an hour. History made in 1969 at St. John Arena. The Columbus East High School Tigers claimed a resounding 71-56 victory over the Kenton McKinley Bulldogs and the state basketball championship. Add to that a state baseball championship in the same year, something no school had ever done before. It's just a great story with drama of the 1960s, great athletes. Guys who are my heroes. Prize winning author and Columbus native Will Haygood calls Tigerland a book he just had to write about black teens from an inner city school who looked beyond the civil rights upheaval that gripped the nation back then to demonstrate excellence in sports. There was so much pain around the country and in the city that to see a unit, an athletic unit together and see them relentlessly winning week after week after week. That was your victory against America, right there. Basketball star Dwight Bo Pete Lamar on the left, and baseball phenom Ernie Locke. Remember those days like yesterday. We never hung our heads down. We know we had uh, we had a job to do. We, everybody was razor focused, and uh, we know we had a job to do, and that was going there and win that game. They did it in an era when there were riots in the street over the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy and when people protested against the Vietnam War. Basketball and sports always had a way of bringing people together, not separating. And that's just what they did, cutting down the net of racial prejudice and in the process, becoming ambassadors for peace in a story that hasn't been told till now. If you ask me, Tigerland, this book, is literary justice. They finally get their due now. And, and I couldn't be more proud of, of that. There's a book launch and reception for Tigerland tonight at 7 at the Lincoln Theater on East Long Street. Will Haygood, plus many of the players from both of those teams, will be on hand. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. First of all, it's good you guys are pretty lucky. Two, two special occasions in the last two school days. I want to thank all of you for a great pep rally on Friday, and I thank you again for coming in so quickly and quietly. Uh, as I tell you, every time I bring you to the auditorium, which is very rarely, I do ask that you take your headphones out, uh, put your phones away. I think you're going to really enjoy today's speaker. Uh, as you heard, the writer Will Haygood is a Columbus native, and he is a graduate of Franklin Heights. I'm not going to give his full introduction. I'm just going to give you guys a couple words of wisdom, please. Uh, you know the expectations. Uh, I think you'll really have an enjoyable experience. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jamea Mohammed with the introduction from Mr. Will Hagen. is a 1972 graduate of Franklin Heights High School. As a Golden Falcon, he demonstrated his unwillingness to, over, to ever quit on a dream and proved hard work and tenacity can overcome a lot of obstacles. 
His tenacity helped him become a contributing member on a great Golden Falcon basketball team, which implied a record of 16-2 and was the first Golden Falcon team to win a league basketball title. The team was the first in league history to go undefeated in league play and the first high team to beat Grove City. After graduating from Franklin Heights High School, he went on to Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, where his unwillingness to give up on a dream pushed him to earn a spot on the basketball team at Miami. He graduated from Miami in 1976 with a degree in urban planning. However, he had developed a unique talent for storytelling and interest in journalism. He decided to follow another dream. He became a journalist in Charleston, West Virginia, and eventually worked his way to the most prestigious newspapers in the country. Will Haygood is currently a visiting distinguished professor in the Department of Media, Journalism, and Film at Miami University, Ohio. For nearly three decades, he was a journalist serving as a national and foreign correspondent at the Boston Globe, where he was a Pulitzer Prize finalist, and then at the Washington Post. He's the author of the most famous book, one of his most famous books, the, um, the Butler. The Butler was later adapted into the critically acclaimed film directed by Lee Daniels, starring Forrest Whitaker and Oprah Winfrey. He has received a John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation Fellowship, a National Endowment for the Humanities Fellowship, and the 2017 Patrick Henry, Henry Fellowship Literary Award for his research on Thailand. Mr. Hankins' latest book, Tigerland, is the inspiring story of his childhood idols championship season during a very trying time in our nation's history. Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy had recently been assassinated in cities around the country, including Columbus, were embroiled in the battle for equal rights. Tigerland provides unique insight into the struggle from a very personal nature and visibly portrays the impact individuals and schools with the social conscience can make on others and an entire community. It is a story from which we can all learn from as we continue to struggle today. Please welcome to the stage one of the greatest Golden Falcons of all time, Mr. Will Hagen. Somebody had the nerve to ask me if I still think. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. On the weekends. Thank you, Kimmy. And I want to thank you, Principal Donahue, for having me back here at Franklin Heights. Of course, this was not the building that I was in. I was in a building that did not look as beautiful and as elegant as this building. So you all are. Uh, extremely lucky uh, to be in this amazing, amazing structure. Um, I was on the basketball team here, varsity, for two years. But I never started. I set the bench. I don't know what was wrong with that coach. But I love the game of basketball. And when I went to Miami University, I had the audacity to try out for the junior varsity basketball team. And I made it. So I went from sitting the bench in high school to making to making the junior varsity basketball team at Miami University. Now I did sit the bench. I didn't start. I did sit the bench. And, but I broke out of a scoring slump against Ball State University and scored four points. It was a beautiful moment in my life. <laughs> two, two beautiful, sweet, long-range jump shots from the top of the key. I'll never forget those shots. 
Um, and so my career ended. And I hurt my knee. Or if there was something inside of me that told me that I was going to get drafted by the New York Knicks if I would have been able to make the varsity. I was a dreamer. It's a beautiful thing to have a dream. It really is. And so fast forward all these years later, at Miami University's homecoming, three weeks ago, I was summoned down onto the football field by the athletic director and the school president, Mr. Gregory Crawford. I had no idea why, but it was halftime of the football game and they wanted me on the field with them. And then they brought out something, it was a big, it was in a big box and it was wrapped. And they took the wrapping off and it was a varsity letter jacket. So after all these years, Will Hager, who sat on the bench on the junior varsity team, received a varsity letter jacket from Miami University. I may well be the most undistinguished, mediocre, celebrated athlete in the history of Miami University. And I'm proud of that honor too. This book that I've written, I think these teams have a lot in common with each and every one of you. Here's why they were champions. But in traveling around the country and finding these athletes, I learned something about them. They were champions without shooting a single basketball or swinging a single baseball bat. There was something inside of them. There was a core of ethics. There was a core of listening to their elders. They studied. They stayed eligible. They cared about the community. They cared about East High School. They cared about Jack Gibbs, who was the first African-American principal in the city of Columbus. And just think of that, two, two state championship teams in the very year that Martin Luther King Jr. was tragically taken from us and Robert F. Kennedy was tragi tragically taken from us. Two figures who tried to bring racial justice to this country. And we still are a nation grappling with issues of race. We really don't need anybody in a position of power to tell us what makes America great. You are what makes and what has made America great. This mosaic of wonderful colors, of people from all backgrounds, all nationalities, that's what makes America great. I was on the campaign trail with a U.S. Senator from Hawaii. He was a Senator then. And he had a dream. And he launched that dream. And he became the first African American president that this nation has ever seen. I'm hoping in due time we have a female president. A country as great as this deserves a great female president, and we have many, many, many candidates out there. On your worst day, something is going wrong at home or wherever, think of the East High School Tigers in 1968, 1969. Every single one of them had I would wager less than you did. And yet they forged ahead. They made it. When I was writing this book, some days some of the writing wasn't going right and I would get frustrated and I would say to myself, Will, 
you can't get frustrated. That baseball team, after losing five games during the regular season, did not get frustrated. When they reached the state tournament, they won eight straight games and became state champions. 55 days after winning their first state championship trophy in basketball. So let the Tiger story inspire you. I think it's one of the great stories of my life. And I've traveled all around the world, saw the great Nelson Mandela walk out of prison. And I've covered hurricanes, earthquakes. But this story about athletes and about a high school, I think is going to resonate with you because in so many respects, you are in this story. And, uh, and I thank you for caring about it. What I'm going to do uh, so that we all can have some interaction is bring some students out because they have some questions uh, from the student body, I think. OK, all my students. What was your favorite part about writing Tiger Lamb? Okay, you gotta start that over. Speak out. Speak out much louder. What was your favorite part about writing Tiger Lamb? Uh, my favorite part about writing this book was, um, I think, finding all the athletes, hopping on the airplane, flying to Texas, finding an athlete from East High School in the year 1968, 1969. Uh, who never thought that their story would be written. Um, uh, I, I don't think if anybody, I don't think if I, if I had not come up with the idea to tell this story, it simply would not have been written. And so, uh, to see the tears in their eyes, these are all men like 68 and 69 years old, to see the tears in their eyes, when I told them that I was going to commit four years of my life to writing this book and writing it right uh, was very touching. There were 12 basketball players, and eight of the 12, their mothers were maids and dishwashers. So just think of the poignancy of that. Just think what it meant now to these players that I was telling them that their mother's story was also going to be included in this book. So that was the most important part for me, to see the looks in their eyes and that they now knew that their story was finally going to be told. How have the athlete's life changed after the public publication of Tiger Man? Oh, okay. Okay, she asked me about the athlete. Well, they all want to go on book tour with me. <laughs> you know, the Boston, the New York, Philadelphia, but they've been great, all of the athletes, and they've been extremely happy about the book. Uh, and uh, uh, very proud. And I think, too, 50 years later, because it was 50 years ago when those two teams did something astonishing. Uh, they are all just extremely happy. Athletics, sports has always been a way to bridge a racial gap in this nation. We've always had heroes uh, uh, who were black, uh, who told America that what Abraham Lincoln said, a house divided cannot stand. We cannot stand if there's riots in the street. We cannot stand if Nazis are marching up and down the streets. Uh, uh, that's not the way to endure as a nation. Uh, and these athletes stood the test of time. What was Franklin Heights like when you were here as a black person? Did you feel like an outsider to a predominantly white school? 
Yes, I did feel like an outsider uh, for several reasons. I came from the east side every morning, and I hopped on a bus, two buses, because I wanted to play basketball very bad. Uh, and so that was something that made me feel, you know, not totally up of the Southwestern School District. But it was here, too, when one of the most important things happened in my entire life. When I was a senior, an English teacher had graded an essay of mine, and she handed it back to me. And she said to the entire class, she said, Will Haygood has just written a beautiful essay, and I want to read it to you. And I wanted to kind of like sneak under the chair and because, oh, I don't know. But then there was a part of me that was very proud. I mean, nobody had ever singled out anything in my life that I had written. And so that set inside of me a goal in to pay attention to literature and to writing. So it was a school teacher at Franklin Heights High School who ignited the dream in Little Will Hager to write. And now, eight books later, I'm still writing. Well, two buses, I would come to school, and then the men's varsity basketball team didn't practice until like 6.30 in the evening, so I would have to walk around for three hours until it was time to practice. Now that took fortitude, I don't know where that fortitude came from, but I had it. Um, and so it was really lonely for me here because I had nobody's house to go over during those three hours. And I would just walk around the neighborhood or I would walk up to Sullivan Avenue and find a warm building to sit inside and have a snack. Um, and so it was lonely for me here, uh, but I had found a basketball team and that was that was wonderful for me to find a team. So looking back, how has your perspective changed after writing Tiger Um, <laughs> When the book that I wrote about the White House butler that was turned into a movie, <laughs> Someone asked me what was the most unforgettable thing that had happened after the movie came out. And I think it was this. After the movie came out and made tens and tens of millions of dollars at the box office and won all of these acting awards, I heard from both of the ladies who turned me down for the high school prom. That's funny. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> One of them said to me, now surely, Will, you, you aren't holding a grudge, are you? And then I said, now why would I hold a grudge about what happened on May 18th? <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> Upstairs at Franklin Heights when I asked you to go to the prom with me. <laughs> what advice would you give to the about the future and how to pursue your dreams? Are they black? Okay, she asked me, what if 
advice would I give to students today about chasing your dreams? Look, 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 look. This is a big country, very complicated, very complex, but we need you. We need each and every one of you. It was the youth 50 years ago who marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., well, 50 plus years ago, uh, who marched with Martin Luther King Jr. in Selma, Alabama, in Memphis, Tennessee, in Cincinnati, all over the country, white and black, from all ethnic nationalities. It was the youth who cared about the American Civil Rights Movement. What you have to do, and it's important, it's a democracy, you have to vote. You have to get involved in the process and vote. You have to care about where the country is going. Uh, and that is important. And we have to, I think, uh, really, really look toward you. Look at the Parkland kids. Uh, they had to endure a horrific shooting inside their school in Parkland, Florida, and they lost very many classmates. And they know that they want to vote for people who are going to enact gun laws in the country. They aren't going around talking about that they're going to take any hundreds of guns. No, not a one of them has ever said that. But we are the most civilized nation in the world with the most ineffective gun laws. And I cry when we lose a student. It is unnecessary and we have to do more. So the students, we're gonna be counting on you to rise up. A lot of adults have dropped the ball. Uh, and so we're gonna be counting on students to rise up, to learn, to keep learning, and to have a stake in this country. Um, I've done my little small role as a writer, telling stories that might not have ever gotten told. It took a great group of black and white teachers to make East High School successful in 1968-1969. Those teachers loved those kids, and that was important. Thank you. Let's give Mr. Hager a big round of applause. His message is one that we can all completely carry forward. Mr. Hager, thank you so much for blessing us with your presence and wonderful storytelling. Tigerland and all of your other works are all vital pieces of the telling of American history. Your works enlighten all of us to the contributions of so many amazing people in our country's constant struggle to become what we all believe America can be. The country Martin Luther King Jr. so eloquently described as a place where we are all judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. You are truly making a difference in our country through your work. Knowing you are a golden falcon who persevered through hard work and tenacity to achieve your dreams academically and athletically is a special point of pride and inspiration for all of us. As a token of our appreciation and recognition of your efforts as a golden falcon, we have decided to create an annual award named in your honor to be given each year to a special golden falcon senior scholar athlete who embodies your characteristics. The student who earns this award must demonstrate dedication to hard work in the classroom, on the court, on the court, and in society. Beginning with this year's senior class, we'll annually recognize this student athlete with a Will Hager Scholar Athlete Award.
there were uh, there were some uh, uh, some certain pins that were made, uh, and they they are with they these pins. Are the jacket cover of my book, and I thought it was going to be a nice thing to share those with you. But I am on the verge of tears with this honor. It, it's just, it's just astonishing. I, goodness, it's better than the Nobel Prize. <laughs> um, it is. It is. Stay right there for three minutes. Well, I think as Mr. Hagen's moving on to do some different things, um, I think we can all relate that the message that he talked about and the perseverance he showed um, to come across the city to come to Franklin Heights is, is an amazing testament to what we all continue to pursue is to uh, work extremely hard for your dreams and, um, and have fun. As you can tell, Mr. Hagen enjoyed his time on the basketball court. Um, you guys were an outstanding audience. He's given out a couple special uh, mementos from his, uh, his book. Um, I don't know if he told you guys, you guys are, are also being a part of this. I know he's in negotiations right now for the movie rights. So you guys are gonna be some of the few students who ever get to hear Mr. Hagen talk directly. This will be a movie made very soon, without a doubt. So when you guys get to watch that, and you can say, hey, I was there when, and I heard him speak, and, I, and I'm an alumnus of the same high school. So um, please, as he finishes up, um, we're gonna wrap things up. Um, remember this, take the message with you. It's an important message, and you guys have been an outstanding audience. Please don't get up and go. Since all of us, so many of us are in here, we're gonna dismiss you guys row by row, and, um, and go back to second period class. So just please hold on. Again, a big round of applause for Mr. Hagen.